hope you guys had a great week. Um, anyone excited about next week, next Sunday? Yeah, we're coming back to our church building. Um, you know, this, this whole week, this week, actually, we checked all of our equipment. Um, it did all the sound checks, all the video. It's still on process for some other stuff. But we, uh, for praise team, worship team, we pulled all the wires out and we rewired everything. So the sound works beautifully now. The stage is clean. Um, we're going to deep, deep clean uh, uh, our carpets um, next Wednesday, I believe, uh, and the couch and the, ch uh, the chairs in the back room as well. We have never done that in eight years. Um, so it's going to be clean and get ready for our regathering. But there are still things to do. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention it again um, uh, during announcements. But uh, coming Thursday, July 1st, mark your calendar, um, 11 o'clock in the morning, we will meet at church and do some cleaning. 11 o'clock July 1st, and we, we need all the help that we could get. And you can, as your schedule allows, you can sew in an hour, maybe two hours, just come out and help us um, just clean up and make things beautiful for our regathering on 4th of July. So um, just let me know, okay? Just text me during the week or whatever. Hey, I'm coming um, uh, and I'm ready to clean. Um, so just let me know, okay, please. All right. Today, um, I titled today's message, uh, Walk With Your Dreams. Walk with your dreams. You know, interesting about our journey in this life is often it feels like we don't have any clue where we're going. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You know, we would love to know uh, where our destination is or how long it will take for us to get there. Because... Because that um, is, we have been programmed, I guess, programmed to believe that knowing these information will keep us in control and safe. You know what I mean? Or at least give us enough time to prepare all the things that we might need uh, for the trip. So we want to pack everything, right? Um, you know, just like just like we make a list before uh, our trip. Right, list of all the things that you need, things um, you don't, you know, things that you don't need to take, but just in case you want to take it and you pack everything, right? Um, and we, we want our journey with God to start like that. But how many of you know that that is often, often not the case? You know, it's more like God give us a, a dream. Um, to and, and tell us to come along and start walking like he did he did with Abraham right and like Pastor Barb mentioned Abraham uh, last Sunday or last Saturday briefly but in Genesis 12 God calls Abraham and tells him Abraham it's time for you to leave your father's house your family and your country because I have this amazing land for you but God didn't say anything about where or how long. He just said, Abraham, or Abram, go and I will show you this land. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you will be a blessing to everyone. And Abram goes, oh, that's awesome, God. It's so great. I'm so excited. Okay, so where am I going, God? No, just go. I, I will, you know, uh, Abram, I will. But which direction should I go then? And God said, no, just go. Okay, uh, how far, how long? No, just go. And that was the basic thing, right? Uh, Sarah uh, or, you know, asked Abram, honey, where were we going? He said, I don't know. And Lot, his, his nephew, asked Abram, uncle, how long will this journey be? I have no idea. And they both goes, what do you know then, right? And, and Abram goes, I know nothing. He just told me to go, so we'll just go, right? We often put all of our attention on getting to our destination, but that's not often not how God works. Now, there's this thing called process. Everybody say process, right? God loves taking us through 
process before before we arrive at our destination because in different places along this process we grow and mature from glory to glory as we encounter God and learn intimately and relationally who God is and what he's like but sometimes and a lot of times it feels like we're walking blind right and we feel the pressure from the things that we struggle with along the way. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You know, you know Genesis 28, you know, Jacob, we remember his story. Jacob tricked his, bro uh, his father, his brother, received all the blessing that his, his brother was supposed to get. And now he is on the run for his life because Esau wants to kill him. You know, but, but verse 11, as he was running away from uh, his brother, uh, Genesis 28, verse 11 says, Jacob came to a certain place. And there he has this incredible dream of this ladder reaching to heaven and angels going up and down. You know, he sees God standing above it and speaking to him. I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west, east, north, and south. And in you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. I mean, it's incredible powerful prophetic dream about God's blessing, right? But how many of you know that nothing, nothing changed for Jacob in that very moment? He was still running away from for his life. He had no clue whatsoever about his future, no guarantee that he would ever be able to come back to his family. And who knows how many dangerous situations that he would encounter along his journey to his uncle's place, right? Everything was still chaotic and hopeless to Jacob in that moment. And I believe that we have all been in that place. Like people pray and prophesy over you of all these great things that God has prepared for you. The things that you cannot even believe to be true because all you can see right now in your, in your circumstances is, is the things that you struggle with, things that cause your minds, you know, anxiety, worry, doubt, or whatever it may be. You know, it could be your finance situations, it could be your health situations, it could be your relationship situations, it could be your self-identity situations, or whatever it may be. No matter how amazing the things that God has for you sounds like to, to us in our ears, um, it's, sometimes it's hard to process it, you know, process all that God says that he has for you because your heart is just too heavy with the weight of your issues. But here's the thing, Jacob did not know that he would see this vision of God when he camped out in this certain place. He probably just wanted to get some rest, you know, get some shut eye for the, for the tomorrow's journey. You know, he's tired physically, emotionally, spiritually, just all in all. And he's like, man, I'm just so tired. I'm just going to, I don't know where I am even. Like, I'm just going to camp out here just, just to breathe a little bit, just to rest a little bit, because I have a long way to go. So to Jacob, this was just another place, a random place. But how many of you know that it was the place that God has prepared for Jacob to have this specific encounter in this specific moment of his life. God strategically appointed the time and space in the most vulnerable moment in his life, calling him into, calling him out of his issues, his circumstances, or his chaotic situations into the greater reality of his plans and purposes for him. 
And how many of you need to step into that certain place today to be called out of your circumstances, called out of your struggle with things in life so that you are equipped with the revelation of his promises for you? Can I say wherever you are today, wherever you are every single day is actually that certain place where God has prepared with open heaven to give you a dream and a vision for your life, to a direction for your journey, to equip you with a greater hope and strength in your most uh, vulnerable moments, to remind you that he is with you and he will keep you wherever you go. The question is, will you, will you lay down the weight of your issues? so that we can, you can pick up and start carrying the weight of his glory like Jacob did. Again, the question is, will you lay down the weight of your issues so that you can pick up and start carrying the weight of his glory like Jacob did? Because verse 16, it says, then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. And in the morning, he anointed the stone that he used for his pillow and changed the name of the place from Luz, meaning twisted and separated to Bethel, the house of God. And I want to challenge us this morning. Will you step into that certain place today? Will you answer God's invitation to start uh, walking with a greater dream and vision and direction and calling for transformation in and through you? Because when you are transformed, then you can transform the world around you. God is calling you to be transformed so that he can transform the world through you. Amen. Now we're going to jump to Genesis 37. It talks about Joseph, one of my favorite characters in the Bible. You know, Joseph being the youngest son of Jacob, Israel, right? Because, you know, God changed his name. Um, actually, he changed, he told Jacob to go back to Bethel, and there he changed Jacob's name to Israel. Anyway, we, we know. Uh, uh, Joseph was his father's favorite. He favored him over his 11, old, his 11 other sons. Uh, and because of that, they all hated Joseph. I cannot even imagine living with 11 older brothers. That's going to be, and being a youngest son, that's a lot of trauma. <laughs> like a punching bag for your 11 brothers or something like that. I don't know. Um, but they all hated Joseph. And it becomes even more interesting because God gives Joseph a dream, right? And Joseph uh, comes to his brothers and says, hey, brothers, I, I, I listened to this dream that I had last night. You know, we were binding sheaves in the field and my sheep stood upright and yours bow down to mine. How amazing. This Isn't that awesome? That's what Joseph said, right? Of course, not a good move, in a move, you know, not a good thing uh, when, when you have 11 older brothers who hate you, right? Not a good move. So, so the brothers um, hated him even more because of his dreams and his, his words, right? He says, then God gives Joseph another dream and and he goes, I had another dream, brothers. You know, this time, the sun, the moon, 11 stars bow down to me. So cool. I cannot, I cannot wait for this to be true. Like, I cannot wait for you, you know, to, 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 to bow down to me. And obviously, everybody heard. Everybody got upset. Uh, the fa his father rebuked him. What is, dream what is this dream that you had? You know, that, that me, your, your mom, your, your 11 brothers will bow down to you. 
and, and all of his brothers got even more mad at him. But it says um, his father kept uh, the saying in his mind. And I want to ask you something. What dreams are you carrying in your heart right now? Now, each and every one of us are carrying the seeds of dreams that God has planted in us. Maybe some of you have been working with God on these dreams, or maybe some of you are, are waiting to discover what those dreams are. You know, no matter what the circumstances may be, no matter, you know, what, even with COVID, it's, it's not going to take the dreams that God has planted in you. It's not going to take, take it away. It just doesn't have power and authority to do that. There is the seeds of dreams that God has planted in you when he created each and every one of you uniquely, beautifully, wonderfully, when he created you in, in your mother's womb. So what dreams are you carrying in your heart right now? And I've shared this uh, many times before, but Life as One is, is actually the very dream that God gave me 13, 14 years ago. You know, I got, he gave me a dream to build a church, but not an institution, not a, 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 a building or, or, or system and structure with rules and regulations, right? But, but he gave me a dream of this family, a loving family that honors and loves God and honors and cares for one another. I mean, back then I was, I was um, serving a church in this denomination. And to be honest, I wrestled with God for several, several years um, because I just not couldn't see it happening in, in that denomination that I was part of. Nothing, nothing, you know, I'm not saying any bad things about it, but it was just that where I was, I couldn't see, I couldn't see it happening. And I wrestled with God, God, how can I make this happen? How can I, you know, what is needed to be able to bring this dream into the reality and wrestle with God until God literally led me out of the denomination and connected me with Life as One as, as it was being launched, as it was, as it was being planted eight years ago. And can I tell, I shared with that, that dream with many people, my colleagues, um, think people that, that I, 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 you know, I trusted, um, people that I shared my heart with. Uh, but can I tell you, not everyone was excited about that dream. Not everyone saw what I saw. Now, some people said that it was just plainly, it's not gonna be, it's not possible. Churches, churches all with broken people and there's gonna be a disaster waiting to happen. The split is always going to be there. You know, people say when you when you reach up to like 300, 400 mark, uh, boom, the split will happen and it goes, we'll, we'll go back down. That's what literally, that's what people said. Now, some people said that I was not qualified to carry that dream. Some people called out, hey, JP, I don't believe that you're called to ministry. People said, some people said I was not gifted enough for ministry, plainly to my face, people that I trusted. But here's the thing, we're gonna, we're gonna come back to it, but verse 14, right? So Genesis 37, verse 14, it says, Joseph was sent from the Valley of Hebron. The Valley of Hebron is where Caleb faced the descendants of Anak, who when, when he spied the land of Canaan, uh, Can, Canaan uh, the promised land, and, 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 and the descendants of Anak were, were considered the giants of the land. Remember, you know, if you guys remember what the other, the, you know, 12 spies and everybody who came and, you know, after they saw these giants, they said, we are like grasshoppers compared to them. 
Now, there's no way that we can go and fight these guys. These are giants. These are mighty warriors. And they disqualify themselves. And when God gives you a dream, how many of you know that there's always the valley of Hebron that you have to go through? There we face the giants that shouts, oh, you can't do that. You're not gifted enough. You're not educated enough. You're not skilled enough. You're not experienced enough. You're not, you're not beautiful enough. You're not, you know, all these things. You're not, you're too, you're, you're too young. You're too old, you know? You can't do this. You know, how many of you know that, that there are giants that we have to face in the, in the Valley of Hebron, right? How many times have you believed what you hear in that Valley of Hebron thinking, you know what, maybe that's right. I cannot do this because, because this, because of that, you know? But when you are going through the Valley of Hebron, facing these giants every day, telling you the things that, you know, reasons why you can't do what you can't do, you know, I learned that so much of it is about actually God conditioning your heart for the dream that, that God has given you and for where he is leading you. The dream that I had about life, as, about the family, a loving, caring family that loves and honors God and loves and cares for one another. I had to wrestle with that, but, but all the things that I went through, everything that I have experienced, people calling me out, people telling me that I'm not qualified on all these things and things that I question about myself. It was about me getting ready, me growing and maturing in the things of God to be able to, because God trusts us with his dreams. When he gives you the dream, he trusts you that you will be able to grow and mature into, uh, into a son in your sonship and daughtership to be able to carry it, right? So it was about me being conditioned to, to believe in the things that God believes in me, believe, conditioned to, to see the things that God sees in me and to, re, to rise ab above everything else, to, to rise above to that level and says, God, I'm here. I'm excited for the dream that, that you give to me and use me, you know? So let God work on your heart as you go through the Valley of Hebron, if that's where you are, because he will bring out David in you to kill those giants left and right. There is David in you that God is calling you to arise this morning. Right. So keep on, keep on walking with your dreams. We got to keep on walking. Stop. And if you're in the Valley of Hebron, do not camp out there. Do not settle and roasting marshmallows and all that stuff. No, do not, do not keep your, your backpacks on and keep on moving. Keep on walking. Amen. So from the Valley of Hebron, then Joseph goes to Shechem to find his brothers, right? Shechem means shoulder. So Joseph is bearing the responsibility on his shoulders with the message as, as he walks the walk with his dreams. And do you agree this morning that every single one of you has unique message that you carry on your shoulders, bear the responsibility for? You know, each story, each testimony we carry on our shoulders will touch people in different ways. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Because your testimony will, will touch people in ways that my stories, my testimony cannot. And my testimonies will touch people in ways yours cannot. And, and how many of you know that is, this is all about Jesus? This is not about competition. This is not about whose testimony is greater and all that. No, it's about Jesus Christ. And do not be anxious because uh, it takes long, a long time for your story to come to fruition. Because Joseph had to walk 50 miles from the Valley of Hebron to Shechem and from, valley, uh, from Shechem to, to Dothan, another 20 miles. And, and, you know, it's not, 
he didn't ride, there was no car, none of that stuff. He just walked. So he probably walked days, maybe, maybe three, four days, you know, just continuously walking. You know, he walked and walked to serve his fathers and his, his, uh, his father and his brothers before he comes into a position of a leadership, right? Again, it's about God conditioning your heart for the dream that he has planted in you. But we are carrying those stories upon our shoulder. So from Shechem, from so the Valley of Hebron, where we fight giants, and to Shechem, where we carry the story testimony of Jesus Christ upon our shoulder, we come to uh, Dothan. He comes to Dothan, the place, it's called, it's, it means to, the place of two pits. So he started with this great promise of everyone bowing down to him. But when he, come, when he came to Dothan, the brothers just stripped him off of his, uh, of, of his robe and threw him into the pit. And now he is looking up to everyone from the bottom of a pit. And, and we have to remember when we walk with a dream, the promise, and sometimes it feels like we're actually going backward instead of forward. You know, sometimes it feels like we are going around and around in circles. Now, how many of you feel that way, right? It's like, there is great destiny. There is the promised land. There are stories and there is destiny that God has called me to, to, to carry. And I know this in my heart and my spirit, but why does it feel like I'm not making any progress? It feels like, why am I keeping going through circles, you know? You know, we want to, we want our journey to move from, uh, from A to B to C to D, you know, in that order. But how many of you know that God will take you from A to, to D to Z and come coming back to B and A, you know, and all over again. You know, sometimes it feels like you're not even facing the right direction for, for you to get to your destination, Right. And, and I, I totally get that. It's frustrating. I mean, I've been through that myself and it's frustrating and we get anxious. We get upset with God sometimes, right? And, but, but that's how God trains us to be faithful to the process. It's like, okay, I'm not a hiking person. I'm not an outdoor person whatsoever. I need my AC or at least a fan or something like that. Um, and all that stuff but it's like it's like hiking up a mountain right it's never a straight line to the top right but there's a there's a curvy path there's a round path you know um, and sometimes you look at the top of the mountain and it feels like you're going farther away from it but actually you're getting closer to it as you continue to walk you know Joseph went from the pet to being sold as a slave. And, and, and again, he's, he's working at uh, Potiphar's house. Um, and he, he comes to, he rise to a position of leadership um, in his house. And, 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 then, and then he's being thrown into jail. Um, and he's staying there without hope, right? Um, and then he comes to this time where he interprets the dreams of, of uh, a cupbearer and, 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 and a baker. And, and, and they, go, they go out of the jail and he says, remember me, you know, remember what I did for you, right? But then again, another two years had, had to pass in jail until he was brought before Pharaoh, interpreting Pharaoh's dream. And ultimately, you know, uh, being, you know, rising to the second in, in command over the whole Egypt. So if you think about his life, there is that destiny that God has revealed to him in his early age. I think it was like 17, right? Uh, early age. But it wasn't a straight path. It wasn't a free way without traffic it was it was it was all that curvy and round and round and even going back to like farther from it feels like farther from the destiny but it was it was a crazy journey and the process 
But at the end, Joseph, through this process, Joseph changed from I will, I will rise in power and you will bow down to me. And his heart, his, his posture changed to this is all about God. Pharaoh, it's not me who will interpret your dream, but it is God. God will interpret your dreams, not me. It was, it was not it was not me, but God. And he says to his brothers, it was not you. It was all about God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh. And I want us to, I want us to remember, you know, we're going through, we're going to regather, which is exciting. You know, it's like we're coming. I don't think we are fully reached our destination, but I think we have, we have come to one destination along our journey. There are things that God has, and, and this is something that I really appreciated this whole process during COVID, that there was not once that God was silent. He was continually speaking to us. He was continually revealing his heart and plans for us. He kept speaking to us about prophetic words and dreams and, and, and pictures and, and Pastor Steve and Pastor Barb and myself and all of you guys, we all have journeyed through just being Align with the words that God has spoken. And it's like, these are the seeds that God has put in the heart and we've been carrying it. Um, and I'm so thankful. When everybody was talking about, yeah, it was crazy, crazy one and a half years and all that. You know, I'm like, yeah, it was. It was. But I loved it. Because God so... He was so present. He was absolutely clear in the things that he was going to do and where he's taking us and how he's shaping us. So we have come to, I believe, a, a point of transition that we're going to come into where we will be able to see the seeds giving birth to something new. And I want us to all understand as we are we gather back, as we step into this new season, that, that we will never stop walking with our dreams. Amen. Together as family, we will continue to walk. You know, we may have uh, we may have to carry each other's dreams sometimes, but how many of you how many of you know that that's okay? Because that's what family does for one another, right? Because when you reach, when you see your, your dreams come true, that's our, our success story as well. And our, our, our story, our testimony of our dreams coming true, coming into fruition, there's also the fruits that you will benefit from. So that's what family does. We help each other. We push each other. We have to pull people sometimes out of the pits sometimes. And that's, that's what we do. We share the weight together. And I hope that that's something that we get excited about as we regather and as we transition into the new season. And I'm excited for our, 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 our next Sunday, but I'm excited for our new season. And I hope, that, I hope that you guys are too. But let's hold on to our God dreams and let's continue to walk together. Amen? Now let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for the things that you have given to us. Thank you so much that you have been faithful to us. The things, the dreams, the seeds, the mustard seeds, dreams that you have planted in our heart, Lord God. And it's in, in development right now, Lord. And it's not only one seed of dreams. There are multiple seeds of dreams that you have planted in, in our heart, in our lives. And, and together we will make this beautiful forest where trees clap their hands and shout your name, Lord God. But in the process, let us be family for one another. Let us celebrate and speak life and encouragement for one another. 
Let us pull people out of pits sometimes and carry their weights sometimes. But Father God, let us do this together as family, as we regather, as we go through transition, as we step into a new season of your blessings for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.